Hey developers, today we're gonna look at how to lazy load routes. Now inside Vue.js, you can actually have routes only load when they're needed. And so it's kind of a nice feature. It's pretty simple, but I wanna kind of deep dive into it. We're gonna talk about how to use it inside your apps, how to add it to an existing app. So let's begin. Oh yeah, but first let's have a quick word from our sponsor. I just wanna take a moment and thank our sponsor, .tech Domains. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably love domain names and you love to buy ones that are short and relevant, but also most importantly, available. And that's what's really cool about .tech Domains. There's a ton of really cool domains available and the .tech domain is broad enough that you can kind of understand that this is technology related as well. A lot of really cool sites are using .tech domains like hollywood.tech, viacom.tech, even personal sites like austinevans.tech. So if you guys are interested and you wanna search for a really cool domain name, go to go.tech slash Eric and then search for your domain name. If you end up buying it, you actually get up to 80% off and one year and five year domains. So go to go.tech slash Eric and go ahead and pick up that domain name. Thanks. In our last video, we talked all about routing, but we did not talk about code splitting. And this is what this video is all about. So if you noticed, when you create a brand new app, you have this path here about, and it talks about route level code splitting and it has this import with this arrow syntax, and then it gives the name of the component. So what this does is it lazy loads this component when it's visited. And the way that works is that what happens normally is you load up your app and this big app configuration downloads and all your components are kind of all bundled into a couple of different files. So for Vue.js to boot your app together, it loads all, it basically loads the whole app into memory, into your, your browser. And what we found is that this actually is, is very slow on mobile. So if you have a large app that has multiple routes and a lot of information in it, you are gonna have maybe dozens, maybe a hundred different routes, especially in larger apps. And for your web browser on desktop to download that it might take a few seconds. But if you're on any sort of slower network, it could take like, you know, three or four, five, 10 seconds which is an incredibly long time for mobile, meaning that most people will close the browser window or not, or just give up before it actually loads. So it's really important that your app is fast. And what lazy loaded means, and with this code splitting, is that the route actually doesn't get loaded until you click on a link that loads it for you. Um, so in other words, you might have a link that has about, when you click on the about link, it's then downloaded into your browser so it displays. And that makes so your initial payload that downloads onto your into your browser when your app boots is much smaller. And you want small payloads, that way your app is really quick and responsive right away. So since it's already built in like this, let's see what it takes, what it looks like. So here is the default hello world app and I'm gonna put it on all here and I'm gonna make this as big as I can. And so if I refresh the page, you can see here it downloads a number of things. So the biggest is the chunk vendors file. And by the way, we are running in development mode. If you run it in production, some of these files will be minified, some of these files will be gone. The, the bundle size is much smaller, but for right now we see it's two megs. Then we have an app.js file and then we have an about file. So you're thinking right away, well, you, didn't you just say that the about route wouldn't be loaded until you click on it? Well, by default, that is not true because what it does, it does chunk it out into its own file. This about.js is essentially uh, the whole file for the about route. But by convention, by default in view, it sets all these chunks to be prefetch. So if you look at purpose here, it says prefetch. And if you look at the MDN article, so link pref prefetching is a browser mechanism which utilizes browser idle time to download or prefetch documents that user might visit in the near future. So essentially what it's saying is that it's downloading this chunk in the background uh, after the main app load. So it shouldn't affect the loading speed of the app unless you have maybe a hundred of these, but it should make the app much quicker to load. So if I look at, let's say the inspect here, let's look, actually let's look at view page source. 
you can see here, here is the link right here and it says Ariel prefetch. So it's prefetching this in the background, but essentially it is lazy loading because the main app loads and then it prefetches any other dependency. So that way it's much quicker when you hit the about link. Now I think inside the configuration, inside view, view you can turn prefetching off if you want to, but for now we'll leave it on. So let's create our own view. Remember views are just like routes in your app. So I'm gonna create, let's go back to our profile.view again, like we created in our previous video. And now if we do vbase CSS, and we, I don't know, we'll call this profile like here. This is the profile. And now we can use, uh, add this to our router. So let's say we add it as normal. Okay, if I copy, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I copy this and I'll paste it. And I'm gonna have a new one called profile and I'll delete this, call it profile. And I'll delete this, call it profile. And then at the top, we'll make sure we import profile from here. And we'll call this profile.view. So when you have, now we have a profile and just to make sure it works and exists, I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm gonna create a new route called profile. And this will be profile. Okay. So now we have a new profile. We click on it. Here's profile route. Now, if we look at our network tab again to see how it works, I'm gonna clear this all out, reload it. We can see our app.js is 167 kilobytes. And then we have the about.js. And right now the profile isn't being lazy loaded. But if we wanted to lazy load it, we can certainly do that. We just need to go here. Okay, we just copy this and we'll paste it here. We'll delete this profile, delete this profile. And we can just delete this comment here. And instead, well, let's, let's delete all of it right here. And this should be now profile.view. And I gotta get rid of this, there we go. So I'm gonna reload it here. And now we can take a look. Oh, one thing, since we had taken away that comment, it actually loads it as 0.js. So that is important. That comment actually does name the, the Webpack name. So let's add it back in a second. So we can do this one more time. So let's change it one more time. So we'll change this to profile. And we'll call this profile.view. Cool. So now if we refresh it, now we have in our network tab a profile.js file. And if we look at the size, it went down from 167 kilobytes to 149 kilobytes. So you could tell that it took the, the data out of the app.js and it put it into its own file, which is about 12.6 kilobytes. So cool. So now we have lazy loaded this about route. It's being prefetched right now. And you know, it works great. So I would suggest when you create view apps, every single one of your routes should be lazy loaded unless you have a reason not to. It just makes things a lot quicker. Um, there's really no reason not to. All right, so I hope that helps you guys. Thanks.